Hello everyone, it's Wan He from Play Tennis and today we are back with another video. Today we'll be talking about four different brands of balls and we'll be reviewing them based on three criteria. The first criteria is playability. How good it feels, how consistent the bounce is, whether it holds up during the match. The second criteria we'll be using today is durability. Durability refers to how well the ball is able to uphold its integrity on the court as we are doing our matches, our serves, our spins or whatever, how well it maintains its integrity. The third and final criteria would be cost, how affordable the ball is. Okay, so for the first brand of balls we'll be testing today, it will be the well-known head tour balls. These balls are all surface, all courts, but uh, mainly in Singapore, we use it for hard courts such as the court we'll be playing on today. And these are quite uh, well-respected and um, well-known balls. Lah and they are known for their quality and consistency when you are playing with them. So for the next set of balls, we have the Don't Look Fort Balls. These ones are, I won't say as common or as uh, well known as the Head Tour, but these are something that you have definitely seen in the shops or seen anyone play with before. These tend to be a little bit harder and a little bit um, more bouncy and heavy as compared to the other balls we'll be testing today. But um, we'll be doing the review later and we'll see for ourselves. So up next, we have another one from Dunlop, which are the AOs or the Australian Opens. These ones in the light blue can, I'm sure you've definitely seen someone play with or seen in the shop before. It's unmistakable in its light color. And um, it is similar to the rest. It is a hard court ball and it's suitable for many different types of court surfaces. But in Singapore, of course, we usually use it for hard courts and they perform well on it and consistently as well. These are also additionally affordable as compared to the other balls we'll be testing today. And for the last one, we have the Slesinger Wimbledon balls. Uh, as the name suggests, this is meant for Wimbledon or the hard courts, uh, on the grass court, sorry. But um, for this brand of balls, these are meant for all surfaces. And uh, even though it says Wimbledon and Wimbledon are grass courts, these are actually meant for Wimbledon. These are on the pricier side and uh, they tend to be a little bit softer and a little bit, little bit more bouncy um, due to the fact that it was originally made for the grass court. So we'll be testing it today and seeing for ourselves. So without further ado, let's get onto the court and find out how these balls feel. Let's give the head tour a try. Starting off with ground strokes for the head tour balls, I felt that my power and spin for my forehands and my backhands translated very well. I didn't have any trouble getting the necessary net clearance through my spin, which I felt was being transferred very effectively to the ball. Moving on to slices. Um, this is where I feel the head toe ball really comes through with its right amount of hardness in the ball Where I can really feel my spin getting transferred to the ball really easily Similarly for the serve, you can really feel your power getting transferred into the serves As you can hear from the serves that I'm about to hit, my flat serves You can hear the really nice crisp sound of the ball striking the of your racket striking the ball rather and it's really satisfying seeing the ball fly past the net right into your opponent finally for the volleys um, I feel it's a little bit hard to control due to the hardness of the ball for flat volleys however for these slice volleys you can really feel your spin the back spin getting transferred really easily to the ball Okay, so for the head tour balls, they scored a 9 out of 10 for playability, 6 out of 10 for durability, and a 5 out of 10 for affordability. The head tour balls were a pleasure to play with. It's just that the price can be quite off-putting at times given its mediocre durability. Let's try out the AOs. As mentioned in the introduction, 
the AO balls are really familiar to me. I've been using them for a very long time when I'm playing competitive tennis. Although I do feel that when I'm doing ground strokes, the AO balls tend to be on the softer side of many of the balls I've been reviewing today. So for ground strokes with softer balls, power will definitely be translated more effectively as compared to spin. As slices are more dependent on the backspin that you are able to put into the ball, the soft nature of the AO balls will result in your spin not being translated as effectively into the ball as compared to harder balls that I will be testing today. For serves, I felt that the AO balls were the easiest on my elbow as compared to the other three balls that I will be testing today. Um, this comes as a surprise because the Schlesinger Wimbledons are actually softer as compared to the AO balls. Other than my elbow, I felt that my power and my spin were translated quite effectively into the balls despite its softness. For the volleys, I felt that the AO balls gave me the most comfortable volley of today. I think that the hardness and softness is just right for the ball to give me the amount of control and spin I need to give a good volley. I will rate the AO balls an 8 out of 10 for playability, 6 out of 10 for durability and an 8 out of 10 for affordability. I feel that as compared to the head toe balls, it just a little bit below in terms of playability. Uh, durability is around the same, it's mediocre, it's neither good nor bad, but the cost is something that is good as it is more affordable as compared to the other three balls that I will be reviewing today. We'll be using the Slazenger Wimbledon ones next. For the Slazenger Wimbledon balls, I was quite surprised that my spin translated actually quite well into the ball when I was doing my ground strokes. Uh, I had this preconceived notion that the ball would be too soft to be able to impart a good amount of spin, but fresh out of the can, it surprised me that my spin translated very effectively into the ball and I had no trouble getting the necessary neck clearance. My slices were very responsive as well. I felt that the backspin I was trying to put into the ball was getting translated very effectively. I could really see the ball um, skid off the ground on the opponent's court. For my serves as well, I felt that my kick serves, my slice serves, as well as my flat serves were really on point. I felt it really snappy, a lot of brushing and all those spins and power translated very well on the opponent's court. And yes, the Slazenger balls for the volleys, um, surprisingly, they were very good as well, very responsive for both flat volleys as well as slice volleys. For the Slazenger Wimbledon balls, I will give them a 9 out of 10 for playability, 6 out of 10 for durability and 5 out of 10 for affordability. For playability wise, I feel that it is on par with the head toe balls. Although it is a very different feel, it is very consistent. Durability wise, it is very mediocre as well. It tends to become even more squishy if you're going to keep it for the next day. Cost wise, it is the most expensive out of the 4 balls that we've tested today and it's definitely something you have to consider when you want to try out these balls. Up next, we have the Dunlop Fort Balls. Among the four brands of balls, I struggled the most with my ground strokes when using the Dunlop Fort Balls. Um, as I am naturally a more flat hitter, I found myself having to really focus on spinning the ball when I'm trying to return ground strokes because 
it was really hard to control if I didn't spin the ball as much as I did. And it's something that I had to get used to when playing with the ball. On the other hand, when I did my slices, I felt my spin and my back spin really translating very well into the ball. Um, it was very easy to impart the spin I wanted to put in and I could really see the ball skidding and dropping on my opponent's side. As expected, flat serves were not as easy as spins such as top spin and slice serves for the Dunlop Fork balls. This is, I would attribute mostly to the hardness of the ball. I found the volleys very hard to control with the Dunlop Fork balls. Even with my opponent hitting softer balls at me, I felt the balls were really attacking me and my racket and I found it very hard to keep the ball in play. Okay, so for my final rating, the Dunlop Fort Balls will get a 5 out of 10 for playability, 7 out of 10 for durability, and a 6 out of 10 for affordability. Um, the reason why I gave such a low playability is because I found it too hard for me to control. Um, the ball itself was very rigid, very hard, and it might be personal preference that I really don't like hard balls that I can't control. Durability wise, it was very good, it maintained its integrity throughout the play, and it held on well to the next day. For cost, it is quite affordable, not as affordable as the AOs, but still on the more affordable side. Okay, so now that we are done playing with the balls, uh, we'll be giving the review, the pros and the cons for each brand of balls. So for the first one, we have the Hate Tour. Uh, when we played with it, the pros were, it's quite consistent. The fluffing on the ball didn't really wear off as we spun the ball, so it maintained its fluffiness, which is good for spin. Uh, it's quite consistent in the bounce and I think overall it's quite a well-balanced ball. Um, for the cons for this ball, I think they tend to go still really quickly. So maybe after a couple of hours of playing or if you're playing today and then you're continuing tomorrow, I don't think these balls will hold up in, the ter in terms of maybe durability. They tend to go still really quickly. So that could be one of the cons. Another con would be probably the price. This tends to be pricier than most of the balls we have today so we should take that into account as well okay next we have the Australian open balls by Dunlop um, in terms of the pros for this ball it's a very well balanced ball it's right in between the hardness and the softness if I could compare them to the balls today it's right in between the hardness of the Dunlop forts and the softness of the Slesinger Wimbledon's Okay, so it's a really well balanced ball, it's a very familiar ball that I've been playing with for a very long time. It's really common to see these balls being cracked open on whether amateur courts or professional places. It's really widely used and it's a very familiar ball to hit, so that would be the pros. The cons would be, it does tend to wear out quite quickly during match play where it starts to get softer, the balls you can feel it digging in and not as spinny as when you crack open a fresh can. So that could be one of the cons as well. Okay, next we have the Dunlop Fort Balls. Um, when we played with this, uh, as mentioned previously, they felt much heavier as compared to the other balls. So when you're doing your heavy spins, like your top spin or your slices, the spin really goes through for this one. You really feel the heaviness of the ball pass through you and you really gotta strike it early to get a good contact on the ball. Um, for the pros for this ball, as mentioned, Heavy spinners would definitely like this ball. It's weighted and it feels really balanced when you hit really heavy and very consistent. For the cons, it would be more or less the same thing actually. For the people that don't really play a lot of spin, tend to hit a lot of hard balls, you tend to go for the softer balls. So um, when you're coming with this kind of hard and heavy balls, your power doesn't really go through as easily as spin. So that could be one of the cons as well. But overall, still a very good ball and was happy to try it. Okay. We have the Slesanger Wimbledon Balls. For the pros for this ball, it's a relatively soft ball as compared to the rest. So when you're hitting your hard balls, you're really crushing your forehands or your backhands or your serves. The power really translates well into these balls. You really see it fly past the net into your opponent. 
Okay, um, other than that, these claim to be 70% 70, 70 more water resistant as compared to other balls on the market. So if you, I guess if you're playing in wet weather conditions or you're playing just after it rains, this might be your preferred choice for that kind of situation. For the cons for this ball, as mentioned, it is pretty soft so it can get squishy at times. When you're trying to give your high top spin for your forehand or your backhand, or so you're trying to give a really deep slice or really drop that ball, you can't really get that spin of that ball as easily as compared to other balls such as the uh, Dunlop Forts for example. So that could be one of the issues. Um, yeah, and overall it's quite a pricey ball as compared to the rest. I believe it's the most expensive, the Slezenger Wimbledon balls. So you got to factor in that kind of things as well. Okay, this has been the playtest for these four brands of balls today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful in your search for the best ball ever. This has been Juan He from Play Tennis Singapore and I'll see you next time.